Hi everybody, David Hope here, Observability Solutions Director at Elastic. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to do what Java automatic instrumentation with OpenTelemetry. Now this is really easy to do, but let's take a quick look at the app that we're using. We have this app called Elastiflix, and it has a favorites service in there, which returns users' favorite movies on the front end. Uh, stores it in a, a Redis database. Very easy, very simple. Go to slash favorites. And as you can see here, there's no instrumentation in here at the moment. It's completely void of any open telemetry libraries or anything. And so we have it up and running over here. And naturally, as you can imagine, there's nothing currently appearing in Elastic. It's got our what would you like to do first screen. And so what we're going to do is go through the process of taking this Java app and getting it instrumented with uh, OpenTelemetry using the automatic Java agent that OpenTelemetry provides. Now, this is actually incredibly easy to do. If you look in Docker file here, which is what we're, we're using for uh, this favorite service, you'll see we do do something really, really simple here. We download the OpenTelemetry Java agent from the OpenTelemetry GitHub repository that you can see there. Uh, we're getting version 1.28 down. And then if you look at our start.sh file, which is the entry script for this application, you'll see that all we have to do is add a few command line variables in here, the OTLP endpoint, the bearer token, resource attributes and service name, and then we point at the open telemetry Java agent jar file using the minus Java agent command line argument in Java. And what that does is, is that Java agents have what's known as a pre main, which essentially bootstraps the Java agent before anything gets to the, uh, the main method. So essentially what we're doing is, you know, class files get loaded up in Java and quite often what we can do with a Java agent using the pre-main method is we can actually manipulate those class files before they get executed. And so what that means is, is that the Java agent itself has the ability to modify the code before it gets ran. And what it does is, is it looks for things that are in, for example, the Spring Framework, which this application is using. It's using the Spring, Spring Framework. It kind of looks inside there and it says, well, I know about these various Spring Framework classes, right? And then it can automatically inject spans into the code where that uh, Spring Framework libraries essentially take requests for example is a good place where we might put a span you know like where we receive a, a request to that favorite service we might want to put a start span there that's the kind of thing that the java agent can do it can also recognize if there are already spans in there and and just sort of tap into those uh, that are already existing because i know that the spring framework actually does already have a lot of open telemetry instrumentation in it and it can automatically make it so that um, you don't have to do any of the configuration to get that span data into your open telemetry backend, which could be Elastic, could be something else. But today we're using Elastic. So the agent is pretty intelligent. It can get that configuration bootstrap, find any spans that exist in the framework code and use those. Um, it can add additional spans to things like, for example, maybe we don't have instrumentation for Kafka. It can do that automatically by manipulating the class files before the application starts by using uh, what we call this pre-main method, which allows you to execute code before an application's main method is executed. So ultimately, a lot of complexity going on in the, in the background but very simple to set up. All you have to do is download this Java agent, apply a few configuration parameters, and run your application, and away you go. You should see your application appear in your open telemetry backend where you're collecting traces. In this case, like I said, we're gonna use Elastic. 
So that's a little tour of the app and what it's doing. Uh, we talked about how to download the Java agent. We're using Docker to download it. We also told you how to configure your Java command line arguments to, to put the agent in to your application runtime. So what's next for us is to go into Elastic. We're going to click on this button here, monitor my application performance. We're going to go down here and click on open telemetry. And we're going to get some of these environment variables and use them in our startup command, right? So over here, what we've done is we, we previously built a Docker. Um, essentially, we previously built a Docker image with that Docker file that you saw earlier. And now what we want to do is we want to execute that with uh, the appropriate command line variables so that we can get things up and running inside Elastic. So let's have a little look at how to do that. We've got various services here. The one we're looking for is the Java favorite hotel auto. As I said, we built an image in here already. So all we really need to do is to um, is to start it up. So what we want to do is we want to do, let's just have a look in here. What happened earlier? So I could just copy and paste the command we used earlier. There we go. Here it is. Docker run. And what we're going to do here is we're going to essentially just replace those command line, those tokens in there, right, with the ones that we found in Elastic. So here we go. We want a secret token. Now, in this case, we only want the secret token. We don't want the authorization bear of a bit because we actually already have that. We put that in there, and then we'll put the OCLP endpoint in here. That is the Elastic URL you can see here. I'll put that in there like that. Now, uh, we may just need one more window open, so I can just do Docker kill to get rid of the previous container that was running. Uh, there we go, get rid of that. And so now we're starting this up. We've put the, the bits and pieces in from Elastic. Let's see if uh, we can get this up and running. And it appears in Elastic. So let's check, is it up and running? Yep. The application is up and running. In fact, what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to uh, do a little while loop here. While true, do, and uh, we can do curl, get the, uh, get the back end here. We can do sleep one and then done. So we get some traffic coming through. And then let's see if it appears in Elastic. Click on here to APM services. Dismiss. It's all the same thing there. Let's just refresh this. There we go. Java favorite Hotel Auto. We're getting that appear. We've got our transaction here, uh, get favorites, which is what we're executing over here to bring back hello world. And if we look down in the various, there we go, we've got some spans. We can actually see a little bit of information coming through there. So we now have APM implemented, which you know has a lot of value for us because we can actually time how much the uh, HTTP call so favorites is taking 3.9 milliseconds. Imagine if this was a checkout process or something like that, you know, with money on the line. We don't want that to be too long. In fact, actually, one of the transactions is quite long here. That was probably like the first one that we executed, 233 milliseconds. That's probably just the JVM warming up there. 
But you know, there's lots and lots of things we can do with Elastic APM here. We can track and see if there are any errors, no errors at the moment. We can look at the service map and see if um, our Java application here is calling any external services. They would then appear on this map. So that's it. That's how you instrument a Java application with OpenTelemetry. Uh, feel free to take a look at uh, the different resources that we have over here, blog posts and documents. Scan the QR codes if you want to, to have a look there and keep up to date on Elastic's journey with OpenTelemetry. Thanks very much for listening.